Hello, thank you for having me. Mm. I'm a current active center writer coming from the Arbuter, and today I briefly want to talk to you uh, to, uh, about the, what's happening in the Kurdish region, especially in the last three years. Uh, as you know, the peace process between the Turkish state and Kurdistan Workers' Party collapsed in July 2015, and in August 2015, the clashes began in Kurdish cities. This time, though, the clashes were in the city centers. It's a characteristic that different from the last 30 years. And uh, the state declared military curfews. At the beginning, these cur the curfews were usually two or three days curfews. But after a while, it became regular and one-to-one curfews. I would like to tell you a little about what curfew means, because a lot of people really don't know what, what is it to live in, in a curfew. When the government office would declare the curfew, bombardment would begin. And they went under the bombs and also clashes. And no one entered the curfew area. People in the curfew areas usually they continue their life with the limited food and water which they stockpile before the curfew. And although people didn't even go to the outside, again you can die inside your home because the sharap now hits the houses. According to the Human Rights Foundation's report, uh, most of the people, civilians, who are killed during the curfews were killed inside their houses. And the state did not allow the families also to bury their uh, dead bodies. In some cities like Gizre, the dead bodies were put in refrigerators and also uh, to, to prevent the mother's food the dead bodies of their children into their refrigerators to prevent their decomposition. And in some curfew areas, people carrying the white flags also, or people who carry the dead bodies to bury, they are also shot. As, for example, in my city in Diyarbakir, the dead bodies remained in the streets for months. We witnessed terrible human rights violations and war crimes. And unfortunately, uh, the Turkish media and the international community, they have closed their eyes to the ongoing war and war crimes in my region, in my hometown. And after July 2016 coup attempt, uh, the state of emergency was declared. And then the government has used the emergency rule to stifle all opposition. And hundreds of thousands of people, uh, they, were, they were fired from their jobs and hundreds of thousands of people were put in prison without any reason. And civil society organizations and media outlets were closed. And journalists put in prison. Turkey, I think, is the world's leading uh, jailer for the journalists. But when we look to, again, my region, the Kurdish region, uh, it is even worse. Kurdish mayors, they were put in prison and then uh, state administrators have been appointed instead of the elected Kurdish mayors. Almost all Kurdish media, even the Kurdish children's channel, were closed. Kurdish civil society organizations, mostly, mostly most of them were closed, and under the allegations of helping the terrorist organization, these uh, NGOs, they were women NGOs, children NGOs, some of them were NGOs like Sarmashuk, who were helping to the families poor families working on poverty. They were all closed. And thousands of Kurdish te teachers and doctors, they were fired from their jobs, again, accusing with the, having links with the Kurdish militants. And all political access has been cut off for Kurdish people. And Kurdish politicians, activists, they are all put in prison. There are re really very less people outside. And as you know, even the co-presidents of the HDP, they were also in prison. And there is a constant threat of detention on Kurdish people. Every morning, the first thing that I am checking is who is det detained today. And after two years, now in July 2018, the state of emergency was lifted. But during this time, in the last two years, during the state of emergency, 60 uh, 36 statutional decrees were issued, and at least more than 120,000 people were fired from their jobs, and more than 200,000 people were put in prison. And all of the all of the institutions, especially the judiciary, armed forces, universities, media, 
structure, they were no longer independent, and everything revolves around one man, just one sound. But before lifting the emergency, uh, state of emergency, the government passed a law on 25th of the July that effectively extended the state of emergency. So the state of emergency has not ended in Turkey. It has continued as a permanent situation now. And due to the last Ju uh, June elections and the new laws that uh, makes the state of emergency to continue, and the Turkey's offensive policies against the Kurdish people in Afrin, uh, Rojava and Iraq. These, all, these are all despair dominated, because of all of these things, despair dominates the Kurds in Turkey. And I think Kurds doesn't have any expectations now from the Turkish state. Just, I would like you, you know, if you go my region, what you will see, if you go to my city, for example, you will see police, police barricades in front of the municipal buildings. You will see police bar bar barricades in front of official buildings. You will see tanks, Thomas, police, army, soldiers with Kalashnikovs everywhere, in, even in the parks, in the hospitals, uh, in a restaurant. You know, when you sit, and a man with a Kalashnikov can come and sit with you. And you will see demolished cities and homeless people, especially if you go to the Shirnak, and Hakkari area, you will see a lot of people still in tents because more than <coughs> 500,000 people after the curfews, now they are homeless because all this, for example, 70% of the Shirnak, we don't have any more Shirnak. Half of the Nusaybin, half of the my hometown, Sur, half of the Sur district, they were all demolished. Mm -hmm. So you will see thousands of teachers, doctors, journalists out of work. And you will see checkpoints everywhere. Inside the prisons, if you go to the prisons, if you can't enter, you will see four to six people trying to sleep in one bed. And you will enter, especially to Shirnak, Jizra and Nusaybin, as you were passing to another country, because of there are a lot of border controls. Today, it is even hard to bury your loved ones if you are a Kurd in Turkey. The state does not give permission to bury to the members of the Kurdistan Workers' Party. Every week, families are applying to Human Rights Association because of the right of bury. We are talking in Turkey now about the right of bury. And today, if you go to the Çukurca area, if you come, you will see that there are dead bodies in the rural areas eaten by animals. The, and also another thing that a lot of people don't know, the, still the curfews are going on in Turkey. In my city, in the heart of my city, in the ancient heart of the city, Suriçe, which is more than 7,000 years old, still under the state, under the protection of UNESCO, still the curfew continues. And this year, at the second day of December, it will be third year of the curfew. And all these changes, they are all have happened in the last three years. And today I know we are talking about the democracy in Turkey, but democracy has already left in Turkey, I think. Thank you.